Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. So today is going to be a bit of a recap of where I am at with reading and what books I have out and what's going on because at the end of this week I am going to Budapest for five days with my friend. So I'm going to be doing a bit of reading when I'm there but I've also got quite a few books that I've finished and that I've taken back to the library or in the process of taking back to the library and so it's very important that tell you about them so that I feel less guilt when I take them back and we're kind of checking in every so often that we're on the same page. Now because I'm doing the booktube judging for round one of fiction group D and we've all been sent emails that by the end of this month we need to read them and rate them. I've had to speed up my reading a lot more which has included some of those books that I have finished but unfortunately I'm not able to talk about them until after that date when we know whether they're going into the next round or not. So I want to start off by recapping The Overstory by Richard Powers which is where I left off with you guys that I was currently still reading. I have finished that and returned that to the library. I ended up giving that book 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really wanted to give it higher but I struggle towards the end with finishing the book. Now a lot of people have really loved it and what I will say is it's a very beautiful um, and very expertly crafted novel. It follows loads of different characters who end up converging in really interesting ways in the novel and it follows the kind of journey of trees and nature but particularly trees so it's cut into segments that are named for example seed or root parts of a tree but the story kind of flows a bit like the development of a tree and the process of how a tree grows in the sense that the characters kind of grow to connect through their love of nature and their protection of trees but the characters are very subtle they're not overstated so i loved the different interesting ways that they met and they connected. Ultimately I think the novel was a little bit too long for me. I'm not someone who absolutely adores nature writing and is incredibly passionate about it. Um, I do enjoy it but I often find that uh, my passions lie with people-centered narratives, coming-of-age stories, relationships on a very intimate level and so nature writing just doesn't tend to keep me as gripped and that's the struggle that I had with this novel. It didn't really have a plot and it didn't really have too many in-depth moments with characters, which was all part of how the book was meant to be constructed and was absolutely beautiful to read about. And I can understand why so many people will love this book because what it did, it did beautifully, but just down to personal preference level, I wasn't fully invested in the last 200 pages I personally think could have been cut out of the story and we still would have kept the essence and the core of what he wanted to produce with this novel but it's very imaginative and creative and I really enjoyed reading it but just didn't overall love it and that's why I gave it three and a half stars and then the next book I read um, I read while I was in the library the other day because it's quite a short book so I read it and returned it while I was already in the library and that is First Love by Gwendolyn Riley. Now this book I ended up giving four out of five stars. It's quite a short novel, it's under 200 pages, I think it was around 190. And this was on a long list, I believe, a good few years ago for the Woman's Prize for Fiction, which was the Bailey's Prize back then. It was controversial when it got put on the list because a lot of people had very jarring experiences with this particular novel. This novel is a reflection of the kind of types of novels that I enjoy. So this one follows Edwin and Neve and the novel starts with Neve moving into Edwin's house and it is kind of an intimate look at their relationship so as the novel develops we realise that Edwin can be quite manipulative of Neve and he's quite emotionally abusive uh, and we learn about her relationship with her mother and how she feels about herself and how this projects the issues that she faces in the relationship and some of the conversations that Neve and Edwin have between one another in the novel are incredibly claustrophobic and uncomfortable to read. The way that he can manipulate how she feels and 
the way that she's trying to be incredibly passive and, and the way he kind of goes into rages and, and distorts the picture of what's happening, I found very gripping and uncomfortable at the same time. And so it really just looks like a very destructive relationship and the way the two of them just can't seem to understand one another. And while it's never physically abusive, there is that level of discomfort when reading it. But I thought it was just a very psychologically gripping kind of snack of a book, one that you can just devour without consequence. But I remember when it came out, people were very upset and opinionated and a little bit unsure of why it was there. But I think it was written really well and, and I really enjoyed it. I don't think it has anything incredibly profound or next level to the actual story but it is just a miniature look at an intimate relationship which is something that I enjoy. I gave it four out of five stars for that reason. And then the next book I read was Moonstone by Sejon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. This is an Icelandic author. I'm really sorry if you can't really see the cover very well. I think it's just the natural lighting today is not great. Um, anyway, so this is set in Reykjavik in 1918 and it follows Manny Stein, a young boy who's about 16, who lives in Reykjavik. Uh, war has ended and Iceland is still currently ruled by Denmark. I'm a bit shaky on the history, I did try to google some things after this because I wasn't really aware but the, there is some reference to kind of Denmark and their control over Iceland during this time and people from Denmark travel over to Iceland at the beginning of the novel and spread the Spanish flu which infects Reykjavik in an alarming way. In the descriptions of the spread of the disease in here were very visceral and it was kind of interesting because I think with everybody's paranoia about the coronavirus at the moment this was quite interesting to read about that spread of infection and there were some scenes and imagery in here about trying to deal with the, the development of, of, of this out of control situation where so many people were dying and and they just didn't have the capacity to bury them all and infection control and things like that and Manny Stein ends up following the doctor around in some parts of this novel um, helping him see to the sick. Manny Stein is also a homosexual at this time and we know from quite early on in the book that he liaises and, and kind of meets up with gentlemen in the middle of the night down side streets and either performs oral sex on them or they perform oral sex on him or anal sex and that at one point in the novel he is caught with a Danish man in a compromising position on a national holiday when he should be being quite patriotic and not caught having gay sex in this holiday and this means he gets sent away to England now there are some surrealist bits in this book as well that are very poetic and strange and disorientating but really add to this, the ethos and the kind of the soul of this novel. It has an interesting style, it's really hard to describe until you're reading it but I found that really interesting, it's kind of quirky in its style and so those surrealist bits kind of seem to fit in with the overall story. I, I don't know how coherent I'm sounding about this, but... So I actually found this a real pleasurable read, so I gave this four out of five stars. Again, this is, I think, less than 200 pages, or just around 200 page mark, so this was really easy to read, and the style was quite engaging for me, so I really enjoyed this one. And then the next one I read was Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. Now, this is a short story collection, and this has very different, quirky, strange, eccentric stories that I absolutely loved. I think this is one of the strongest short story collections I've read. I haven't read many, so that's not a particularly glowing statement, um, but I really got on with this. So if you look at the cover, it kind of has these teals and greens and gold kind of make you think of the sea and kind of otherworldly, under the surface kind of imagery and that definitely follows 
the themes that are raised in this novel. So there are quite a few references to the sea and to weird tentacled creatures that live under the sea. Salt Slow is one of the, the stories in this collection. But I found a few very, very compelling and that stuck with me. So one is called Cassandra After and this follows a lesbian couple and the main protagonist has lost Cassandra, she's died and she was buried and then a year later she comes back to life and just turns up at her door and she's in the process of decaying and it's very very visceral and haunting and disturbing and kind of makes you think of that Dracula-esque strangeness and, and they're kind of having their last confrontation about what happened to their relationship and you learn how and why Cassandra died. I was absolutely captivated by that story and it, in the imagery it portrayed, the way she wrote about it, that character will stay with me and that kind of horror and, and discomfort of something very otherworldly was done beautifully in that story. And then another one that I really liked was The Great Awake, which was this premise that suddenly overnight people develop shadows, which mean that they can no longer sleep anymore and they are forever kind of in a state of continuous consciousness with this shadow that kind of follows them around everywhere and their shadows engage and meet with one another the shadows don't speak the presence and some people haven't developed them yet but most people haven't particularly people in cities and this woman meets her shadow one day and we take the story from there but the the concept and the way she writes about this restlessness this constant consciousness this lack of sleep but this desire for sleep is written very beautifully and makes me wonder whether the author's ever suffered from insomnia because the way she writes about craving and desiring sleep and, and the weird inky night and how the distortion of time from not being able to sleep was was just written about in a very interesting way in these premises of physical shadows of a presence of your own insomnia was was really interesting as well and then the last one i really liked which had a very kind of comedic style to it was called formerly feral and followed a woman who her parents split up and her mother takes her sister away and her dad ends up dating somebody in the same street as her who has a pet wolf and he marries this lady and she brings the wolf to live with them and the wolf becomes her sister uh, the relationship's kind of strange it's almost beyond a pet it's really interesting because it's this juxtaposing of something very feral like a wolf and trying to domesticate something that just doesn't want to be domesticated and the effects and it kind of has a a bit of a red riding hood creepy ending that is also really good in it so i would highly recommend this collection if you haven't read it if you love short story collections especially the weird and wonderful this was the right side of weird and wonderful for me sometimes really surrealist stories where there's just no point or plot or characters or anything i find a little bit difficult to connect with but these have really coherent plots with just that splice and dash of creepy dark and weird which i really enjoyed it's still a really gripping story uh, more of your psychological under the skin kind of stories than than two out there so i really really enjoyed this collection and then the next one i read was lanny by max porter i really really cannot talk about this even though i really want to all i can say is it follows a little boy lanny remote village in england and there is this fable-esque character called Dead Papa Toothwort who the community all kind of know about as a, as a mythical style individual and I really can't say any more than that I know that most people will have heard that because Lanny has been blowing up Booktube for quite a while now so I know that I haven't done any spoilers but yeah I will talk about this after this month when I'm finally allowed to and then the next one I read was Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson, which I've just finished today. Again, this is on my booktube judging list. So I cannot talk about this either. It is set in New York, kind of contemporary time, and follows a girl, Melody, and we learn about her family and the generation of her parents and her grandparents, and that's about it. I can't say any more than that. But obviously I will talk about Lanny and Red at the Bone 
and an orchestra of minorities when I can which is just after the 30th of March that so will be next month. But there are all the books that I've read I just want to quickly recap that when I have been to the library to take some of my old books back I always always take more books out even though I promise myself I won't but I have a problem so so what I did take out was Truman Capote's Breakfast at Tiffany's. I know you can't really see that. This can seem to have a lot of shiny covers at the moment. You can't really see them. But it's got a lady holding a, a glass of wine. And I'm currently 36 pages into the story. This is actually a very short story. I think it's only around 91 pages. And there's a set of other stories, if you can see there, um, called House of Flowers, A Diamond Guitar and A Christmas Memory. So I've gonna finish that today and try and read the other stories and I don't really need to talk too much about Breakfast at Tiffany's I guess I think a lot of people have watched the film and it's kind of a modern classic I'll, I'll recap with you at some point when I read it but I feel like a lot of people know the premise so does that one and then I've also taken out The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson now this was quite a big buzz on booktube a while back now but I've always thought in my head, if I see this, if it pops back up, I, I will make sure I read it. This is a love story between Maggie Nelson and the artist Harry Dodge, who is fluidly gendered. As Nelson undergoes the transformations of pregnancy, she explores the challenges and complexities of mothering and queer family making. So I remember a lot of people have heralded this book as as a modern modern classic as, as one that everybody should read and I really like that play between gender and mothering and I remember loads of people just love 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 this book so I saw that it was in the library and I thought now's my opportunity because I thought if I didn't take it I'll probably forget it was in the library and it's one that's been on the list for a while so there's that one then I took out Queenie by Candice Carty Williams I don't really need to explain why I took this book out I saw it in the library and this has been blowing up recently I know Lauren over at Lauren the Books has just read this and really enjoyed it this and quite a few others that I have mentioned or ones that I'm planning on reading have also popped up on the Women's Prize long list this year which has just been announced today and there are a few other books that were also on my radar because they are on the man booker translated fiction list that just came out as well but anyway this has ended up being on that list a lot of people have really raved about this and i kind of wanted to be on the hype so when i saw it i thought i need to get it out quick because this will be requested very soon i have no doubt so i really need to get to reading this but it's about a girl called queenie queenie jenkins I think it's contemporary USA. She's a black woman and it's about developing her identity. Yeah, it says a subversive take on life, love, race and family. I know also that Barter Hordes has recently read this and he seemed to really, really enjoy it. He did have a few issues with it, but it seems like one of those kind of, you can just race through it contemporary almost YA style as well I think it's a bit more adult in content but it seems to really remind me of The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas I think it's going to be similar in content so I'm really looking forward to reading it and then the next one I took out was Agatha Christie's The Mysterious Affair at Styles. This is the first Poirot novel and I really wanted to start from the beginning. So when I went to the library the other day, they had Ozy Mysteries section that they kind of done a display on. And I saw this one and thought, yes, this is the first Poirot and I've been looking for this in my library for such a long time, hoping they had them. It's very strange for weeks. I was searching through the crime and then through the regular sections for Agatha Christie and I couldn't find any and then this display was filled with Agatha Christie novels so I don't know whether they've all just been alone when I've previously been looking um, but at least now I know this, they're definitely there and this one is the one I really wanted to get to to start Wyro from the beginning so I don't know anything about the first one but I'll be sure to tell you when I get to it so there's this one and then I found Jamie Quattro's Fire Sermon. Now this one was on my radar for a very long time because the girls over at the podcast What Page Are You On have raved about this. I thought this was a short story collection, but apparently it's not. So this follows Maggie, who's devoted to her husband Thomas, their two beautiful children, and to God. And then what begins as innocent letter writing with married poet James starts to become something far more erotically charged. So everybody 
I know that has read this has enjoyed this. A lot of people who got the recommendation from the same podcast and was absolutely raving about how, how well this was written. So when I saw it again, this was another book a little bit like the Argonauts that has been on my radar for a while. And I always kept saying to myself, if I find that book, if it's in the library, I'll definitely get it out. Because one too many times, this book is one that I was tempted to just buy. I didn't think my library had it, but my library is proving me wrong at the moment. So can't wait to get to this one. On a similar vein, because of that one, and also because of the podcast, when I found Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This was another one that was recommended by them. I think they quite recently read this one. I think this was on quite a more updated podcast than the other book. Um, but this is a series of short stories. Weird and wonderful and everybody said there's just some fantastic stories in here. Again, I saw a lot of people taking this out since the podcast recommended it and they were putting posts in little kind of Instagram stories saying that they really enjoyed it. So. I really wanted to get to it. Again, it just popped up. I saw the name of the collection, Her Body and Other Parties, and thought, yeah, that's on my radar. Why is that on my radar? It's like a lot of these books were kind of in my subconscious that I wanted to read. So I don't know what any of the stories are about, but I'll tell you when I get to them. And then the last book I took out was The Silent Patient by Alex Michael Ides. Alex Michael Ides? But this book I took out purely for the hype because I know that quite a few booktubers, I know the booktube channel Getting Hugo with it, she read it a few months ago and really enjoyed it and I kind of thought I would take a palate cleanser because I feel like this is a contemporary thriller that I think I will be able to race through. The premise is that a woman has old shot her husband i can't really remember if she shot him or not and then she put it in asylum and she kind of refuses to speak so therapists are trying to get her to speak to find out what happened i always thought the premise sounds really good and um so i thought i'd get to it so that's all of the books there's still three other books i need to read for the prize and i still have another six books out from the library that i've already shown you so I really need to get reading. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with a brand new video. Bye now.